Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. Yeah, I decided to do this video because, like, does Rickon Stark even matter? I don't know. Every time I see him, I just want to say, baby Stark, do, 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 do. You know, no one ever talks about Rickon Stark, the littlest Stark of them all. Everyone myself included, always talks about Bran and Rob, Sansa, Arya, and Jon. But does anyone ever talk about Rickon? Even in the story, does anyone ever talk about Rickon in the story? Not really. So today I wanted to talk about his story and the implications that his story could have on Winds of Winter. Majority of us have surmised that Game of Thrones season eight was fan fiction. So what's up with Rickon in the books and what does his future look like? If you're wondering, I got you. So in the beginning of A Game of Thrones, Rickon is only three years old. All of the characters were actually way younger in the books than on the show. The show aged everyone up a few years, so certain scenes weren't disgusting, even though they're still disgusting. But Rickon is three years old. He is a baby. He's a toddler. What happened to Rickon in the show? Actually, not possible. 100% not possible when it comes to Rickon. Ramsey Bolton could never. For one, Ramsey does not have Rickon. And in the book version of The Pink Letter, there is no mention of Rickon. In the books, Rickon and Shaggy Dog leave with Osha. So Bran and Rickon are Rob's heirs. So they can't stay together. Now, Bran seems to think they are in White Harbor. But we later learn that Rickon is likely in Skaggles. Now, Skaggles is a very interesting place that raises a lot of red flags when it comes to Rickon. So let's talk about all of it. So in order to talk about Rickon and his fate, we need to discuss Wyman Manderley and the Grand Northern Conspiracy. So the Grand Northern Conspiracy is actually a really popular theory from Reddit that the Northern Lords and Ladies and everybody in the North are really pissed at Roose Bolton and the phrase because of the Red Wedding. In the North, things like guess right still matter. That is an ancient and sacred law. So we know Wyman Manderley specifically hates the phrase, and the Boltons too. His son was killed at the Red Wedding. My son Wendell came to the twins as a guest. He ate Lord Walter's bread and salt and hung his sword upon the wall to feast with friends. And they murdered him, murdered, I say, and made the phrase choke upon their fables. I drank with Jared, jape with Simon, promised Rhaegar the hand of my own beloved granddaughter, but never think that means I have forgotten. The North remembers, Lord Davos. The North remembers, and the mummer's farce is almost done. My son is home. Something about the way Lord Wyman said that chilled Davos to the bone. So it's also believed that Wyman Manderley may have cooked Jared, Simon, and Rhaegar Frey into pies and served them at Ramsay's wedding, and he ate them laughing and slapping his stomach and shit. Savage fucking savage. But anyway, Davos is going castle to castle to try to get the Northern Lords to proclaim Stannis as their king and fight with Stannis. Um, so at White Harbor, he meets Wyman Manderley and Wyman Manderley has news that Rickon and Shaggy Dog and Osha are in Skagos and he wants Davos to go smuggle Rickon home. Bruce Bolton has Lord Eddard's daughter. To thwart him, White Harbor must have Ned's son and the direwolf. The wolf will prove the boy is who we say he is, should the Dreadfort attempt to deny him. That is my price, Lord Davos. Smuggle me back, my liege lord, and I will take Stannis Baratheon as my king. So Davos going to get Rickon from Skagos is yikes. Skagos is a scary place. It's like nowhere in Westeros. It's an island in the north, but bruh, they are savage up there, like seriously savage. So Skagos is in the north. It's an island, stony, and the waters around it are rough and treacherous. And the island is parallel to Eastwatch. So they have like this whole different culture going on up there. Their first men descent, some say they're descended from giants. 
They're kind of like wildlings, like the stone crows and the burn men type of people. It's even rumored that like they still practice human sacrificing to the weirwoods and also cannibalism. And the Skagosi and Winterfell don't have the best relationship. The people of Skagos started a rebellion against Winterfell during the reign of Darren II and it lasted a long ass time. But it's pretty much confirmed that Rickon is in Skagos. Not only does Wyman Manderly say he's there, John has a wolf dream in Ghost where he sees a shaggy dog battling a unicorn. And yes, unicorns are said to be in Skagos. A wild rain lashed down upon his black brother as he tore at the flesh of the enormous goat, washing the blood from his side where the goat's long horn had raked him. So it's very likely that Davos is going to go to Skagos and get Rick on in Winds of Winter because George R.R. R. Martin said on his Nada blog about Game of Thrones having an ending that there would be unicorns in the Winds of Winter. Yes, bitch, unicorns. So we could go to Skagos and see the long shaggy haired unicorns or the Skagosi could bring their unicorns to battle for Winterfell, but I doubt it. So Rickon is now only like six years old, so he would need a regent. And Rob Stark has already written a letter naming Jon Snow his heir, so I'm pretty sure that Jon Snow is going to get Winterfell. So there could be some squabbling about who will be the Stark heir between all of the northern lords that are all in cahoots in this grand northern conspiracy against the Boltons and the Freys. So I've been really thinking about Rickon and what his part to play will be. And Rickon has wolf dreams. He's connected to Shaggy Dog, just like Jon is Ghost, just like Bran is to Summer, just like Arya is to Nymeria. And if you watched the last episode of the Obsidian Knights podcast, me and I Eat Zebra, we talked about the names of the wolves mirroring the Stark children. Well, Rickon's wolf's name is Shaggy Dog. Stupid fucking name. But in the storytelling or in storytelling and or in writing, there's a trope, a Shaggy Dog story. A Shaggy Dog story is a long rambling story or joke, typically one that is amusing only because it is absurdly inconsequential or pointless. So Rickon could indeed not matter, but that isn't the only way to look at a shaggy dog story. A shaggy dog story is long and complex and complicated and it ends in an anti-climax. Like you had sex, but you didn't have an orgasm. You know, that's probably too much. I'm sorry, but that's a good example. Um, It could be that Davos gets Rickon and Rickon is killed or he's so changed that he doesn't want to leave Skagos. And keep in mind that Rickon should be very different than we last saw him. He, he was already wild as shit, but he's been with Ocean in the Skagosi for the same amount of time he's been with his parents and family. And when you're little like that, you're learning as you go, your brain and your mind is developing. So I lean toward Rickon being wild, like seriously wild, like we've never seen him. I believe that he will have adapted to the Skagosi culture and he might possibly not want to leave, which won't win White Harbor to Stannis' side. But what do you think? As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.